I don't know if you folks are doing much sandblasted signs where you're at or in your area or if you've seen them done. Um, back in the 70s, 80s, and a little bit into the 90s, they were pretty popular still, but they've kind of lost their popularity over time and, um, you know, with the digital age, obviously. But there's still a desire for them. And actually some... Some uh, places actually require them based on whatever whatever uh, sign schedule they've come up with. I have rolled this on with a roller, but I found that it just makes a big mess. And so rather than that, this time I'm going to go ahead and use my trusty Kafka quill number 10 and just follow the lines as best I can, getting close to the edge as I can. And I just have it slightly reduced so I so it flows, but it's not too thin and becomes transparent. I'm gonna have to come back and touch up. But, and right now I'm just kind of getting started, so I kind of have to get in the groove every time I'm doing um, something like this. I plan on touch-ups. That's the beauty of paint. And plus I gotta get this brush kinda to the, to the, uh, to fit the letter width. It kinda takes a little break in time, but we'll get it. And uh, this is, this wood is American Red Cedar and uh, it's a really, there's, there's pluses and minuses. It's like a lot of things. But the plus is that it's very ex exterior, exteriorly durable. <laughs> Bugs don't like it, obviously, and it holds up well in the, in the elements. But when you just completely encapsulate it with paint, that doesn't really too matter too much. Redwood is what we used to use. Uh, but in the last 30 years, um, vertical grain kiln dried redwood is almost extinct. And so a lot of us have given up trying to find it. And there's probably people who have it stashed away in their secret stash somewhere um, and are going to sell it when they need some money. But... For the average sign shop or person who wants vertical grain, that's the, that's the two key words, vertical grain, because if it isn't vertical grain, you won't see the grain like you see this. So redwood was really good because it was just the right amount of, uh, how should I put this? The grain was nice and rounded, so when you blasted it, 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 uh, it created a really nice grain effect because it was the grain would really pop and be pronounced and just and just look really good. And the uh, in between the grain would would get blasted away um, at a very uh, dense yet consistent uh, depth. And so that was really desirable, because then you you had a you, you had more control. You really felt it, you didn't have to think when it comes to redwood. When it comes to cedar, cedar is a much softer wood. It's also more splintery, and so it doesn't have that um, that consistency that redwood does. So that's the minus is that. When you blast cedar, you're really, you're really not sure what you're gonna get every single time. And even though you check the grain and you make sure it's vertical and you get as tight as grain as you can find, uh, you still end up with kind of this uh, mushy, kind of fibery consistency when it's all, after it's blasted which is undesirable because now you've just got all this kind of like 
no matter how you blow it all out with your compressor, air, air hose, it still comes out kind of splintery because the, the, the fiber is so soft. Um, in this case, I found uh, that my supplier uh, had a stack of these one by sixes that f were the most tightest vertical grain I've ever seen them have. And part of me thinks, well, I should just get stock up on it. But this stuff is really expensive. And so just stocking up on something that you may never use, in my opinion, is unwise. For me, if I had if I had an unlimited amount of resources, maybe I would, but I just have I can only buy what I need per job. I can't live buying surplus. It just doesn't work out for my economics. So I had to say goodbye to the big giant pile of beautiful, perfectly grain, perfectly perfect vertical grain cedar. <laughs> Just say, well, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll encounter some in the future, and who knows? I may never do another sandblasted sign again. Um, unlikely, but you just never know. The where this sign is going is a complex where the property owner. Um, made made sandblasted signs mandatory so as people come and go this particular complex will always have sandblasted signs until the owner of the property changes their changes their mind about it anyway so this is going pretty good i'm starting to get my i'm starting to get my uh, groove so i'm also picking which means i'm also picking up speed that's what painting is, is all about. You gotta get, you gotta, I mean, I haven't, I mean, I just, I haven't done anything. To, this is the first thing I've done today, so it's kind of like, you gotta get your head in the game. And when you're talking to a camera, <laughs> you're kind of compounding your concentration. As you can see, I'm kind of stopping here and there. I'm hitting the, I'm hitting a little bit of a curve. So let's get a little closer. Oh, don't get the cord in the paint. Uh, I got the cord in the paint. Okay, we'll just put that over there. Oh, where'd you go? Okay. This is a clothing store, women's clothing. Jade Allen is the name. Awesome client. She, this, is, this is a new store she's opening up. She, it's her second one. And um, so she has to have a sandblasted sign according to the lease. So we're gonna set her up with a nice, clean, classy black and white. And she's gonna open, I believe, in about two weeks or within two weeks. Uh, sandblasting has become harder and harder to, to um, get people to do. Uh, the EPA has come down so hard on sandblasters in this area that many of them have just quit because of the amount of regulations they force upon them, uh, they can no longer maintain, um, it just, it's just no, they can no longer continue to run their business. It just becomes too expensive. And there's too many restrictions with sandblasting. If you've ever seen sandblasting, it, it's, it's, it's pretty, uh, well, it's pretty intense. It isn't, like some people are thinking maybe it's not like bead blasting, which is in a little tiny booth that cleans engine parts, metal parts, things like that. It's a large portable trailer compressor, uh, diesel compressor that um, uses a one and a half or two inch hose line for their air. So it's a lot of volume 
and it also is a lot of pressure. So the two things you need for sandblasting wood is volume and pressure and a lot of both um, in order to uh, remove the fibers that are that are in that are uh, in this wood and uh, that's an expensive that's an expensive thing to operate now the sandblaster that I use is mobile uh, I've, I've used other sandblasters in the past and they've they've either like I said quit because they cannot maintain uh, the business because of the restrictions and regulations or uh, they have decided that sandblasting signs is not viable enough for their business so they stop doing sand sandblasted signs themselves they stick with either large equipment or sandblasting the side of your house swimming pools whatever where they can make a, lo a large volume of money, and I don't blame them if, if signs are not helping them, then don't do it. So the uh, gentleman I use is about 40 minutes away from me. And like I said, he's portable. And he goes out and he does, he does like, um, farm equipment, because we live close to an agricultural, um, uh, a very large, we're in a very large ag agricultural location. And so farm equipment needs constant maintenance. And one of those maintenance is sandblasting all the debris and um, rust and everything on their equipment. And he, he blasts it for them and then somebody paints it. Um, so what I do is I say, hey George, I've got a, I've got a sign, sign to blast. Are you gonna be anywhere this week? And he'll tell me where he's gonna be. And sometimes it's out in the field somewhere. And so I'll put my sign in the truck and I go out and I find him out in the middle of a field somewhere where he's blasting some kind of agricultural rig. And uh, I drive up with my truck and my checkbook and I lay the sign down about 10 feet away from where he's blasting. He sees me, he spins around, he blasts my sign and he takes his helmet off and shuts his, his uh, compress or just his, just his sprayer. He shuts down his sprayer and because he likes to talk and we like to catch up. So <laughs> and then I pay him, we kind of chattel for, for a few minutes and then I'm on my way. So it works out really good for me because there's, there's a lot of blasting companies where you can't do that. They say, well, you have to leave it here. We'll blast it when we have time because they're a fixed shop or something. And then uh, we'll let you know when it's done. But most of the time, we're in a hurry, and this client needs their sign. So, since I found him and, and I'm able to, he's able to do it for me while I wait. It only takes him a few minutes, and he's made, you know, 60, 80 bucks for three minutes of work because I tell him it's a service, then it's worth it for both of us. And, uh, I can get that. I can get the client their sign quickly. Now, if he goes, if he decides to shut down or stop doing signs, it's going to be another search for another another blasting company. Let's see if there's anybody else who can do it or wants to. So that's my little story. Be interested to hear what your story is if you do blasted signs or. If you want to do blasted signs, it's quite a step process. I mean, there's a lot involved. You've got to first obviously shape the sign into the what you want it to be. And then there's special masking for it. 
there's it's a very rubberized now they have like a now they have a pvc like a really soft pvc that works pretty good but the other drawback with cedar is that i found no matter what mask i use it pulls up the fibers even if you prime it even if you prime it twice and put two coats of top coat on it'll just pull the fibers right up um, because you know it ha two things are happening it has to stay on if it starts flipping and coming off when they're, when they're blasting it then you're in trouble because now you got to repair whatever just you have got to repair just whatever got blasted because the stencil came up so you it's got to be strong enough to to hold um, and then and then when you go to pull the stencil off it's it the fiber comes up with it now you now you have to sand the whole thing down just the part that's you know you, you, where you're going to paint it not the background obviously because that doesn't matter because that's and that's not going to have the stencil on it but you have to pull the whole uh you have to sand all the tops of the letters down and then um you know reprime it paint it you know and then put your final coat like i'm doing now I just paint the whole background of the letters same time, same color, same t at the same time. It's just a lot easier, just to flood the whole thing, and then um, so that that's the difference. Another big difference between redwood and cedar is that redwood didn't do that. Redwood was so I don't know what you call it, so um, substantial as far as the wood itself, the fibers of the wood, so tightly substantial and interwoven that it didn't peel up like that. I never had a problem with redwood. I have a problem with cedar 100% of the time, so I just count on it. There's one time when I just said, well, there's no point in putting a primer down and just put the um, stencil, the mask, sandblast mask directly on the wood itself and the, the manufacturers actually said you can do that and um the only thing is there's a there's another there's a higher risk of the blat the the sand blaster um you know pulling you know blowing up the blowing up and peeling off the stencil so it's kind of like the the primer is kind of a little bit of an insurance because it gives you just something for the stencil to adhere to rather than just the bare wood. But, I mean, everything's kind of experimental and there's const there's new products constantly coming out. So you just kind of have to be on the, on the search for products, find out what other people are using and that kind of thing. I'll post, a, I'll post in the bottom in the comments down there uh, the the blasting um, mask that I use. So if you want to try that, or <laughs> even better yet, if you know of a, one that's foolproof and works perfect for cedar, let me know because I've been, I've been searching, I've been searching and sampling. Um, and that would be great if somebody somebody had uh, a better, better blasting mask. Or new of one. So I've been talking through this whole, whole name so far. Uh oh, heaven! I'm on a I'm on a diagonal that's coming straight at me. That's kind of awkward. I'm gonna have to spin this. It's it's gonna be really hard to do that way. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to spin you guys around. Hang on, don't get dizzy. Here we go. There we go. Okay. Now, that's better. Cuz I've got to I've got to pull the brush away from my away from myself. So it's just one shot lettering the white and the black is reduced just a little bit, just enough to so it'll flow out of off the brush. 
but not so much that it looks transparent. I just want to do one coat. I don't like putting too many coats on uh, because it can start to orange peel. And as we all know, those who've had a project orange peel on us, it's not desirable because it means we have to sand the whole thing down to the bone again, start over. That border also gets black. And yeah, if you got a sandblast story, I'd love to hear it. Or if you got um, connections to other YouTube videos about sandblasted signs, that'd be sweet. Okay, I won't bore you with doing the whole border. We'll just do like a little racetrack for about 12 inches just for fun oh you know what would be even better let me get my uh, cotton glove on it'll go a lot slicker I love these cotton gloves the pinstripers trick for nice um, smooth drag really makes a big difference to just be able to go, f you don't even have to think about, you don't even have to think about the flow. It just goes so smooth. Now this little section actually has, is a very low blast. I um, Guess I could have gone a little bit more, but it's only one inch material. And so I didn't want to go too deep, but I noticed right now, you know, I've noticed when I seeing it now it's like it's almost hardly any depth to that one corner i can see how you can have, it's already bleeding down so i'm going to be doing some touch up there because i don't have a real good edge but the rest of it is is a good edge and it's going pretty quick so i'll just be a little racetrack driver here going around the Round and round we go. Okay, signs all set, ready for installation. Took about three times to get those bubbles filled in. I guess they were pretty deep in the cavity. But um, yeah, oh, hey, wait a minute. What are you doing there? Hmm, well, I guess I have an addition to the sign. Well, let's see how, see if you're gonna go with me on installation and help me install this thing. Sound good? Right on. Okay. Hey, thanks for watching. See you on the next time.